it's Donna from Little Red Hen Fabric Shop on Etsy and I'm here today to share the latest project I've been working on. So I'm I'm enjoying making this quilt. Um, it's called uh, Grandmother. Let me show you the pattern. It's right here. And so I, what I was doing, let me just tell you a little intro. What I did was I had gotten these fabrics in and they're called flower and flower. So like flower you bake with and flower, you know, pretty flower that you smell. Um, anyway, it's called Flower and Flower, and I got these beautiful fabrics. They're pink. This one has a little pink flower, like a setup fabric, and then a medallion-y type thing, and then this beautiful print that ha even has little strawberries. So that is for strawberry shortcakes. So <laughs> that's what that's for. So anyway, I got those in and I needed, you know, wanted to make something out of them. I love them. And I looked through my three yard quilt book. That was my first thought when I ordered them. And, you know, I only have a couple of the books. So none of the books that I have on hand lent themselves to those three prints. And so I just kept looking around. Well, I had this little Villa Rosa pattern. And, you know, we kind of take these for granted. They're just these little postcard patterns and um, this one has a big uh, square in it and then a nine patch and they used for the you know instructions on the pattern they used a uh, layer cake to make the nine patches so they did their scrappy you know like or well not really scrappy but more mixed colors and so um, using the three fabrics that I had I decided to make it like this so um, I made the, oh, I had it upside down. <laughs> um, so what I did is I made the nine patches out of the dark and the light. So just a traditional nine patch. So that's like this with the darks in the corners and in the middle and the light here in that position. So I made the traditional nine patch and then, um, the, you know, the square, the snowball block is what that's called with the little corners. And then you just put, you alternate them every other one. So you put your nine patch, your snowball, your nine patch, your snowball, and you just keep alternating those. And so what I liked about this is you get this alternate block and it's right here. It's this, see that little block there? And I thought it was so pretty. And um, so this becomes kind of the setup and this is the actual what you're looking at when you see the quilt. And I think when I get it all sewn together and everything, it's really going to, you know, pop. So, um, but I thought this was a good chance to show how to make um, strips, you know, strip sets. And we call it strip piecing and uh, to make blocks. And there's really four quilts that are you think of when you think of strip, you know, piecing. And that is your nine patch quilt, your four patch quilt, your rail fence or your fence rail quilt, and log cabin. So those quilts all are just perfect to make with this, you know, method. So this is a super fast way to make, you know, quilts. And um, I just want to show you real quick, you know, how to do it. I'm not going to sew. I'm just going to show you the blocks and strips and things that I made. So. In the instructions, it will tell you to um, make these, what they call strip sets. Um, it's like this one here. It's three strips sewn together with the fabric. So that's the full width, 45, or really it's about 44, something like that. And you sew on one unit, a light with a dark in the middle and then a light on the side. Okay, and then you make two units with like this with a dark light dark so this um, I'll show you what you do after you make your units you press everything to the dark when you do this and so you take it which um, I'm gonna back up a little bit when you make strip sets like this it's super important to have accurate seams so, um, you know, this is a time when you want to make sure your quarter inch seam is, you know, consistent. And another little thing I want to say from having classes and having sewing groups and things like that is your quarter inch seam is going to be different than someone sitting next to you at their machine. So 
don't stress about, you know, is my seam exactly a quarter inch? No. The most important thing is that your seam is consistent. So your quarter inch seam, you find, you, you know, use your foot pedal on your machine that you're going to sew with and you just keep that lined up on that spot and keep putting your fabric through. Don't worry about, don't get your measure out and say, oh, is this a quarter? The most important thing is that it's consistent. And you know, our quarter inches, some are a little bigger than others. And it's usually just a little bit like a, you know, nothing measurable, but um, you know, just do your, you know, keep your seams consistent. So anyway, so you'll press um, when you're making nine patches and four patches, pretty much most strip piecing, you're gonna press to the dark. So you see here, I just took it to the ironing board and I pressed everything to the dark. And so the reason is because when you go to the next step, which is cutting what we call cutting slices. So some people will call them cut units. So the instructions will say, um, subcut or uh, cut this unit into you know whatever size so they'll tell you you know turn it sideways on your cutting board and I usually fold it in half like this because I think you know I'm getting done twice as fast <laughs> you know so I cut I set it on my cutting mat and you know cut it to this um, slices to the size that it tells you to so you know in this case I shouldn't tell you the size because it's in the pattern but I cut it to the size that it said and here is what I got these slices me pull that off so see there like that so I got <clears throat> slices like this and the one that had the two lights and the dark in the middle slices like this okay so I'd say you can already see the nine patch you know so you're you're um, in a nine patch you've got the dark pieces on the side so you're gonna need two of those and this one with the lights you're only gonna need one so that's why we have two with the dark and one with the light because then it all works out you get the exact amount of blocks out of you don't have any waste so let me flip this up here so then the next step is pretty you know pretty simple you just piece these together and this is where your pressing comes into play so you press this to the dark and you press this to the dark so you can kind of see this is pressed down and up to this dark and this seam is pressed out like that so see, in and out. So then when you sew these together, those are gonna line up perfectly. Look at that. Your darks are going your little seam's gonna be going the exact right way. So then you just sew these together. And then you, you know, you'll, uh, if you're like me, you're gonna chain sew. You're gonna do the whole stack of them. And then you're gonna have it sewn like this. And then you just pick up the next dark and sew that on. So there's your nine patches. And these go together super quick and they're usually super accurate. So if you do my trick of just keeping consistent, you know, go with your machine, don't worry about anything, just sew your machine and keep it going the same, you know, in the same spot on your machine, sew your quarter inch and you're gonna come out with perfect nine patches. So then after you make them, you've sewn all, you've pressed everything to the dark, You've made your nine patch and it's come out beautifully like this. Then um, you just take it to the ironing board and you press it to one side. You don't try to do anything crazy with your pressing. You just lay it on there and you press it in one direction. And then you, you flip it over and you make sure there's no little folds and things. You pull it a little bit and you press it again. So there's your perfect little nine patch. And it is the exact same size as this. Let me show you this little snowball block. So let me show you that. See, they're the same. They line up. So, um, and the instructions, you know, in the pattern tells you what sizes to cut. So let me show you this snowball. This one's super quick. This is a flip, a sew and flip. And I did chain piece and I thought I would show you how that looks. And uh, you just take your square, that's the size that they say, and I do this sitting at my machine. I do this sitting right there. And I just get my little, small little ruler and I draw my line, you know, and I take my uh, Frixion pin that erases when you press and draw my line. And um, 
I just do so many ahead that I'm working on and do it that way. So that's just the way I like to do it. Um, and then I'll sew the, you know, you see what I did. I sewed that right on the corner. And then I'm gonna get my scissors. Oh shoot, let me cut this off. Okay, and so then I'm just gonna take this to the cutting mat and cut it off a quarter inch away from the sewing line and then iron this out. So see, there's one corner. And this is a quick process as well. I do a whole stack at a time and then I just press these straight out like that. And I'll show you one, here's one. It's all done. And they're all pressed out. See that? And there we go. So that's how you do this. It's not hard at all and it goes quick. And um, you know, it's been fun to work on. I've done this in a couple sittings that lasted maybe an hour each. Um, you know, I, I can't say, you know, maybe it didn't take me long at all. And I was just, I kept counting, you know, how many do I need? <laughs> Things like that. That seemed to slow me down more than anything. So. Um, that was about it for that. I wanted to also mention something else. So summer is just getting started. Um, I don't know if you're like me, you've got grandkids or you got kids that are home. They're, you know, you got, they're around and, and um, you know, there's a few days there where they're kind of driving you crazy. <laughs> but um, I, I had a lot of kids, so I know <laughs> those first, that first week after school, let's out is kind of crazy. But then after that, they seem to settle down quite a bit. But um, take the time to show the kids something in your sewing room. So when they come visit at grandma's house, um, you know, maybe, you know, show them something fun, uh, make a project, even if you do most of the sewing and, you know, something quick and cute. If it's taking them to the store, letting them pick out a fabric, to make them a pillowcase, you know, something like that. Um, kids love that. Um, they want it, they want that, you know, that pillowcase grandma made them, you know, or whatever. So, and it's fun too, to show them how things work in your sewing room. Um, these little, these little pins are fun. Um, we had, um, we wrote their names on pay, on a fabric. And then we had them, you know, press it and it disappeared, you know, so the kids really like that, you know, so you're, they're learning a lot when, you know, you do things like that. My little granddaughter was over here, um, a month or so ago and she's, you know, she's not old enough to sew, but she got the scissors and she cut the fabric. She made a little heart out of the fabric. So, you know, and that was so cute. I was looking for it. It's sitting here somewhere and I couldn't find it. Um, I'll probably see it this afternoon, but you know, just want to say, you know, and get them interested in sewing, you know, let them see what you're doing. Um, you know, they're not interested in something like this, I'm sure, but you know, show them things and, and get them involved. So, Okay, well, it's so nice to see everyone and show off this flower and flower fabric and, and this cute little pattern. It's called Grandmother. Um, I think it would be really cute done the way they did it. Um, I'm not too fond of the orange, I have to say, but I think if you got a layer cake like they suggest and the, you know, the showy print to use as that square, it would be a really cute quilt and it'd go fast. Um, so anyway, so thanks for listening. Come and visit me in my Etsy store and see what's new. I've got, you know, new things I've been putting, putting out there. So um, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.